That's our thing. Okay. You know, we gotta do our thing. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, we were off. We were Three, off. Three, two, two, one. one. Hi, everybody. It's Erin. And Jeff. Happy quarantine. Happy quarantine. All dressed up with nowhere to go. Right, but it is important. Like, if you have not worn human clothes in the past seven days, just try it out. It makes you feel human again. So let's jump right into it. Today, we're gonna be talking about our final goodbye and how we did long distance dating. Mm -hmm. And would you like to start it off? I, on my base, we had a Christmas ball, Christmas party, uh, bought tickets. It was a big old blowout where uh, all of us troops got into our fancy clothes that we bought for no reason. <laughs> and uh, get up together, you know, have door prizes, have a bunch of drinks, have a little bit of food, and uh, have ourselves a good old time. Now, I wanted Aaron to come with me, and I was so excited because I was bringing a girl who was not military, who was not Korean, and it was very, very unique. And everyone was so excited because I had bought two tickets, and everyone kept on asking me like, ooh, who's the <laughs> second? It's a very small town vibe where everyone knows your business, I swear. Three hours after I bought those tickets, someone who was completely uh, different, who wasn't in the room, came at me, and said, yo, who's, who's the second, who's the second? <laughs> Word travels fast when there's only 70 people in your warehouse. Well, and the way he described it to me, he was like, oh, you know, would you like to come to a military dinner? And I was like, oh, should I dress up? What should I look like? Is it fancy? And he was it's like, It's just a fancy dinner. And he was like, it's it's semi-casual, um, it's, it's whatever. So I ended up wearing this type of baby doll dress. Now keep in mind, Korea gets cold, oh. but I was dressed like a Korean female with the baby doll dress and the puffy jacket and the, the short skirt. And the short skirt. With the long boots. <laughs> with the long boots. That is the Korean female uniform when it gets cold out. I have forgotten my tickets, which I had <laughs> bought like about two weeks earlier. Yeah. And so I had to run on back in the ice. Uh, what was it? About, like, he left me with his friend. Oh, can you just watch my guest while I run back and get the ticket? The minute Jeff was out of eyesight, the guy he calls Van Wilder put his arm around me and was like, oh, hey, what's up? It is dangerous bringing a civilian woman <laughs> onto the base because it's like bringing a wounded gazelle into a lion's den. You have to mark your kill and you have to protect it at all times. I was gone for all of what, five minutes and you already have people hollering? Well, that's the thing is, is that I introduced her as my girlfriend. This was after. So after he came back yeah, with his ticket. So this dinner is- Dinner time, it was nice. We got to sit down, have ourselves a fancy dinner. We were next to LJ and Sperry, I think. That's when you introduced me as your your girlfriend, but when he had to run back and get his tickets and left me with all those lions, he was just like, oh, can you just watch my guest, Aaron? And they were like, okay. <laughs> those are my people. And next thing you know, I had all these arms around me. Mm -hmm. Hey girl. It was like those uh, Ryan Gosling, hey girl right. memes. Hey girl. <laughs> right, and uh, every time I would come back and see an arm around her, I would just, Wait, here, 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 here there you go. I would just take that arm, Place it right back onto the lap. <laughs> no words needed. He never Stern said a word. Stern ass look. And it worked. <laughs> I've never felt so well. <laughs> so moving on, after yes. the dinner, and they played a raffle, and then everybody later on dispersed, and then he took me out to the military bar. Yes, uh, we went on over to A-Town and got uh, Drizzonk. Uh, it was super fun. Uh, ended up like breaking off to uh, steal her cell phone and then put uh, relationship status on Facebook. <laughs> he if did. that dates he did. this story, he did. that's back when that meant a lot. Yeah. And... He took my phone and he changed my relationship status from single to in a relationship. So I never accepted that request. Now this went on for years. <laughs> like after a while, I just forgot. Like after maybe two years had gone by, I totally forgot, I was like, we're together, everybody knows. But I never changed the relationship status. The biggest thing is that this was the date where we finally broke the L word. His friend came up to me, she was a female. She was a blonde girl with a ponytail and that's all I remember about Scary. her. And and she was like, so what's the deal with uh, you and, uh, and Jeff? And I was just like, well, you know, I really like him. And she was like, do you like him or you love him? Because I see how you look at him. And I was like, well, I don't know. You know, I just got out of a long relationship, even though that long relationship was like seven months ago. And she was just like, no, are you sure? And I was like, well, I do love him. And she was like, well, if you love him, you have to tell him. Because 
if you don't tell him, he'll never know. And I was like, well, what's the point? He's leaving. There's absolutely no point to this. And she's like, no, just tell him. So I ended up telling him and then he was like, oh, he didn't say it back. He did not, that's what I remember. He did not say it back. And I was just like, you know what? And you know what? I wasn't hurt about it because I just had to get it off my chest because she was right. I did love him. So I had to tell him. And then the very next day when he was leaving after the base and we went back and I slept at his place and he said, I love you too. And then that was it. And then I didn't see him again. <laughs> after that, we had to start the preparations for long-term, uh, long-term, long-distance relationship. Yes. And because of that, we, you know, we are not relationship advice people. We can only tell you what worked for us. Right. Uh, I'm gonna be real, even after like recounting how we met and how we got on over to California together, I still don't see how we did it. Uh, but there are a couple of things <laughs> that I held on to during the 18 months that we were apart. Tip, tip number, number one. one. Uh, tip number one would be have an end date to your long distance relationship. Yes. And if you don't make a plan to rejoin, you'll find out that this doesn't really mean anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and hey, if you're comfortable like that, that's cool. But know that like a relationship, you, you do have to physically be somewhat close at some point in time. Yes. And it's good to be on the same page with that. Um, Second thing about that is... Wait, wait, wait. So, no, we're not on tip number two. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> uh, before we ended up doing the big move uh, together, I visited her homeland over in New York. She visited my homeland over in, in Utah. Utah yeah. If you can't do that, then long distance becomes much, 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 much harder. It's going to involve real sacrifice, almost like a real relationship. <laughs> but no, he's right. So my his contract ended in February. My contract ended in uh, the following September, but I decided I wanted to travel around the world for six months. So right. instead of being around um, for seeing him again in about nine months, I ended up seeing him again in like 18 months because I was like, listen, I love you and everything, but I, this, I'm this i over here on the other side of the world. I'm going to see the rest of the world. So I just went from country, I just country hopped. I country hopped for six months and then I got back home. And as soon as I got back home, three days later, he had already made a plan to come see me. And then six months later, you know, after I got home, got a new job and I saved up, then I met him in Utah. We still made a plan to meet up at the end of it. Tip number two. Um, jealousy. Uh, jealousy will drive you crazy if you're the type of person who is jealous and needs to have that sort of, uh, mm -hmm. that has that sort of insecure drive to make sure that no one's messing around with you. I want you to know right now, if you're not on the same continent, there's no way for you to enforce fidelity or uh, behaviors or any sort of, any sort of control that you want to exert. You're not going to have that. So, and, and, and adding on to that, because you're not gonna have that let go, let flow. If it's meant to be, it'll be, you don't have to force it, you don't have to do all this. You do have to try effort, okay? You do have to put forth some effort, but if it is not reciprocated, let go, let flow. If he would have been like, hey, look, Aaron, I've moved on without you, I would have been heartbroken, yes, but I'm out here living my life. Do not pause your life for someone else. You know, if it's gonna, if it's gonna work out, mm -hmm. then it is. Yeah. <laughs> Tip, Tip number three. three. <laughs> Make every date some type of special. You know, you don't have to make your last date special because maybe your last date will come unexpectedly. So, you know, just try to make every, all your time together, just try to make it special. Right. You know? Because uh, the military ball, that wasn't supposed to be the last date, but then life happened. Exactly. The military date was not supposed to be, because it was supposed to be a ball. And mm -hmm. I knew that he was going to be leaving sometime, but I didn't know it would be that quickly. And it just so happened that our last date in Korea was... It was really, really good. I've had boyfriends before, but none like him. <laughs> That's why I grabbed onto him. Wow. He's mine. <laughs> but yeah, I, those those are only tips. Is that right. it? Uh, I think that's it. Um, if you're with somebody uh, right now during the quarantine, tell them you love them, but give them their space. Uh, I've experienced. Uh, 
during the military, there was a buddy of mine, Pearson, where I would see him 23 hours a day. We slept next to each other in like our shared dormitory, that sort of a thing. Um, I don't recommend spending that much amount of time with literally any human being, <laughs> even one that you love. <laughs> I agree. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and those who have subscribed, thank you for doing that. And those who have commented, thank you for doing that as well. We read them all, and we appreciate you. Yeah. So thank you for supporting us, and we hope everyone is happy, healthy, and try to stay positive in light of the current situation. Bye.